Was there anyone that knew that kind of proved to you that they can be in that normal rotation the rest of the year? I was pleased with a lot of guys. I was pleased with uh, Colby McAllister. Um, you know, he ended up getting the start for us. And, um, you know, I, I felt really confident with him, but I thought he played really well. Um, I was comfortable, uh, more than comfortable after seeing Will Lee. You know, I think uh, Will, Will played exceptionally well. Damian Olalio. I mean, there were a lot of guys that were seeing their first action that answered the bell. I was pleased with a, a number of guys. How eager to get Siegel back in the mix? He'll be back this week, yep. How eager are you to see him play and see what yeah, he can do? Yeah, he's, he's been phenomenal um, throughout camp. And, and, you know, when he got here in the spring, we knew he was a pretty special player. So I'm excited for, for guys to get an opportunity to see him go. Jake Clifton is probably one of your more valuable players. Like, how do you answer behind him without him being there at all three spots? Yeah. Um, just kind of Johnny do it all, isn't he? And, and um, you know, we, we have guys that are capable. You know, Toby Austin Sami's phenomenal. He might be as gifted of an athlete as we have in the program. Um, Asa Newsom, you know, is is not not that much different than Toby. He's just you know really really green. Um, Austin Romaine, I think, is is more than ready. So. Guys are just going to have to go. You know, guys are going to have to go when they get their opportunity. You know, it was nice having Jake because he had some snaps under his belt. But, um, you know, he'll be back later on in the year, and we'll get him back in the, in the rotation. He is very valuable, no question about it. But I think we've got guys that are, are ready to answer, answer the bell and get their, their chance to shine. What kind of challenge does their running back present 200 yards through the last four games? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best in the country as far as I'm concerned. I mean, just – Incredible vision, incredible balance. Um, you know, I think he really understands their scheme well. I think he understands where to hit things and and how things are going to wash and move. And I think he he just uh, um, has played a lot of football there for those guys. And from what I hear from the special teams guys, he's on the he's on the dang punt team. And I mean, he's just a really good football player. I mean, I just uh, have a lot of respect for him. And so. You know, we've obviously seen good backs before, but uh, you know he is—he's a special one. I don't—I don't know if we'll see too many better than him this year. How different is the version of Uso that we have right now compared to maybe a year ago or even oh. eight months ago? Yeah, just a, a much more comfortable, much more confident player. Um, not not even in what he's doing, just comfortable and confident in in his own abilities. You know that he can play at this level. I mean, he's a guy that was playing running back in eight man football not long ago and. Um, just hadn't this was really green you know really wet behind the ears and I think he's been he's been so um, um, much I impactful as a leader and and j not only in, in the defensive line room but in the defense in general I'm, I'm excited for him to to get fully healthy and, and show people what he can do is he going to be closer to a normal play load I think so you know I uh, honestly we didn't think he was going to play much last week and uh, you know, late in the week, I think he kind of turned a little bit of a corner, and so you know, we used them in, in some some situational things. Um, but uh, I think he'll be be back to normal here. What was so special about Brendan Moss' performance? You no, know, Coach Klein said he didn't even lose a snap last Saturday. Yeah, Brendan is just Brendan's just steady Eddie. I mean, he's just uh, he's going to do things right. He's going to be disruptive. He's going to be. Um, you know, enthusiastic, and and so he 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 did exactly what I would expect him to do on an, any given Saturday, and he'll he'll do the same. Uh, you know, many more Saturdays this fall. As a whole, what's your breakdown of the Troy offense? Well, I think um, you know, tremendously athletic on the in the in the perimeter. You know, and I think that's something that uh, uh, is going to present some challenges and some problems. Obviously, we mentioned the tailback. I think. You know, when you put those two things together, that can give you some some real issues because it's going to be hard to, to to load a bunch of people in there to to stop the run, and you're going to leave some one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside, and vice versa. You start you know doing some things coverage-wise, you're going to have some some trouble you know in the box. So um, they have a they have a, a good little mixture there of what they can do, and you couple that with a quarterback that's played as many snaps as he has, and a guy that manages their offense so well, and I think that that. Um, you know, and I think they're they're good O line. I mean, I think they're a physical group up front. Um, I know they lost a couple of pretty good players from a year ago, but I think they've you know I have a lot of respect for that program. I know they've got good players at all their positions, so it's just the experience that some of those guys have that uh, that concerns me a little bit. We talked to the guys a lot on Tuesday about celebrations from the game on Saturday. Did you get to see any of those, or did you have a favorite from whether that be a sack celebration or touchdown celebration? Boy, I, uh, 
the Khalid Duke going fishing thing, I thought uh, struck a chord with me because uh, I'm not a great big fisherman, not patient enough, but but he is, which is an interesting uh, little factoid about him. So I thought that was kind of cool. Other than that, I don't know, man. I, I was just having fun watching our guys play. See the Texas tight end, what you guys do with Senate. Troy's got number 14. You see more college programs trying to evolve the tight end position? That's what it is, yeah. It's not uh, – you're not seeing the six, you know, the six, seven, two hundred and seventy five 275-pound guys as much anymore as you're seeing the, you know, the guys that can flex out and be receivers. And so, you know, Troy has two of them, uh, number 14, obviously, in the transfer, and then number two on their roster. Uh, they'll even use uh, 89 out there sometimes and, and do that stuff. But I think that – that's what college football is. And when you get a guy um, that can block, like Ben Sennett, you know, those kind of guys, that, those, are, those are dangerous guys that are hard to plan around.